Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Plan Commission ARB meeting for December 20th. Uh, and at various agenda items, if someone wishes to speak, uh, please raise your hand and you'll be let in at the appropriate time. Let's start with the roll call. Chairman Steve Lichtenfeld. Here. Helen DeFate. Here. George Hedick. Here. Carolyn Gatiss. Here. David Gibson. Here. Robert Demlow. Here. Ira Berkowitz. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do not have minutes to review from the previous meeting. They will come up at our next meeting. So we can move right ahead into the public hearing. And uh, Anissa, I believe you're going to be leading this off. Is that correct? Yep, um, I believe Susan is in the um, participants as an attendee. Okay. Do you know where she is in that group? I don't see her name on the list. No. Here we go. Bringing her over now. Hi, Susan. I see you're muted right now. Susan, do you hear us? I can go ahead and do the presentation. Okay. That works. Okay, that'll be uh, the first public hearing and we'll <clears throat> open the public hearing now and Anissa will proceed. Okay. The first public hearing is for proposed amendments to repeal and replace the CBD core overlay district standards and the downtown district standards with the new Northeast downtown overlay zoning district and to consider design guidelines resulting from the recently completed downtown overlay district study conducted by H3 Studio. This is the final public hearing for this item. On August 16th, this item was tabled by the plan commission and sent back to the steering committee so that the steering committee could weigh in on a proposed change to the draft build two line development standards. The requested changes refer to ground floor facade exemptions. The plan commission discussed the possibility of modifying the current draft ordinance to require a six foot setback from the front build two line as opposed to the proposed zero foot setback. The question asked by the plan commission was, shall the build two line setback requirement be modified to require a minimum setback of six feet on average to a maximum of 12 feet on average? The steering committee then met on November 12th. After discussion, the steering committee did not support the proposed changes for several reasons as listed on page two of the staff report. These concerns included, but are not limited to concerns over the enforcement of the space, legal concern regarding the potential for a de facto taking, inconsistency with form-based code principles, the potential for legal challenges with requiring public uses on private property, vagueness on the uses that could occur in the space, and avoiding buildings that are designed to a very specific use. However, discussion to increase the percentage of the total facade length for corner lots to allow up to 50% of the facade length ensued, and the steering committee recommended to increase the setback percentage for corner lots only up to a maximum of 50%. Additionally, there are no changes to the uses proposed in the original draft, and the table in the staff report serves to identify retail uses defined as primary and secondary in the original draft. And that concludes um, the summary of the staff report. Okay, thank you. Uh, is John Howell in the attendee list? Or uh, 
Tim and John are both in the attendee list. Oh, they are. Okay. Trying to promote them, although Zoom is not wanting to cooperate here. Here we go. Here's Tim trying to get John over here as well. Good evening, Tim. Good evening, everyone. And Hello, there's, Tim. There's, there's John. John also. Hi, John. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Anissa has just gone through the staff report. And uh, if either one of you would like to elaborate any more on it, um, before we open it up for discussion, we'd appreciate it. Sure, Steve, I'll, I'll just offer a few additional um, points. I think um, Anissa's report uh, very concisely um, outlines the summary of the discussion that we had with the steering committee. Um, I don't really have anything substantive to add in terms of the, in terms of the content of her comments. Um, I, I will just say that we we definitely uh, appreciated the opportunity to continue to be engaged um, with the with the committee. Uh, some of some of the members whom are also members of uh, this body, um, we we really had uh, two key points of engagement uh, with the committee. We we met on site uh, back in September to walk the area and identify some of the. Um, points of, of either question or concern that had come up um, in the previous uh, public hearing process uh, by, by members of the, um, the Planning Commission. And then uh, following that, uh, that site walk, which I, I felt um, I will speak for myself in saying, and saying, and I hope the other attendees felt this way as well, it was a very, a very, productive, uh, very productive exercise to be able to see some of these things uh, in person on site. Uh, following that, we, we had a, a, a follow-up meeting with the committee um, where we discussed the, the pros and cons of the proposed changes in detail, um, as, as Anissa had outlined. And ultimately, I feel as though the committee came to a very, um, a very thoughtful and, and reasonable decision um, with the recommendations that are outlined in the staff report, which is to say that um, they, the the direction that the committee wanted to go um, allows for some of the uh, corner uses and um, uh, corner outdoor uses, uh, design features, and um, and 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 other uh, interfaces between the built environment and the public realm. That uh, this these guidelines are are intended to uh, promote. Um, while at the same time uh, permitting that that flexibility and working within uh, form-based code best practices. So just wanted to um, thank the committee uh, for for their their thoughtful consideration of this. Um, and it's been a pleasure to work through uh, work through this process with them. And I think it's at a really good, really good point for consideration tonight. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Um, we agree, we think the process uh, with the steering committee was very valuable to uh, coming to where we are tonight. John, did you have anything more to add to it? No, I just wanted to emphasize uh, one thing that Tim had mentioned, which was the corners. Um, there was a lot of discussion and feedback and in, in the community uh, feedback on how important the corners were in terms of having the potential to open them up and create more active corners um, versus the, the first round of the recommendations. So I, I think that was a very thoughtful uh, and a very nice thing to do um, uh, for, for your downtown area. And really brings, you know, there's, a, there's this great history of great corners make a great city. Um, so I think that it was a very thoughtful insight and I'm pleased where um, the recommendation has ended up. Okay, thank you. Um, before we get into uh, discussing by the planning commission, um, I'd like to say having been part of the steering committee, <clears throat> it was a valuable lesson in learning about form standards, uh, which I really was not 
uh, very knowledgeable about before, and uh, also talking with citizens and other concerned people uh, beyond just our elected and appointed members. So uh, it was a very good uh, way of going through this. I do feel that the uh, form standards that were recommended uh, by the steering committee and the concerns that were brought up there on November 12th were very valuable. Uh, but I think we need to go ahead with all the other members of the plan commission and see what other comments we have on there. So uh, Carolyn, would you like to begin? Um, I actually, I think it looks great. We've gone through so many iterations on it and we've edited quite a bit and taken all the suggestions. So I really don't have additional comments at this time. Okay. <clears throat> Bob, I think you disappeared. We'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, George? I don't have any additional comments. I appreciate uh, the planning group uh, meeting back together on this one to address our concerns. Okay. Helen? I like the end result. Nothing further. Very well stated. Uh, Ira? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would I would still have liked to see a little more, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the steering committee has spoken, and uh, I am in the position to uh, support that committee's decision, uh, and I don't have any further comments. Okay, thank you. David? I don't have anything more to add. Just thank you to everybody who worked on this over the last uh, year or more. It's, uh, it's a very persistent group that we have that, that carefully deliberated all these items, especially that, that build to line and the setbacks. So I appreciate everybody's work on it. Good, thank you. Um, let's see, Bob has not returned yet. Okay, uh, well, we have a quorum. Uh, we do have a staff recommendation uh, to approve the draft ordinance uh, and, um, and the design guidelines as proposed. I didn't ask if anyone had any further questions on any of the design guidelines, which were in a separate packet uh, included uh, that was delivered on Thursday. Um, if you did, speak up now. No, okay. I think we had massaged it quite a quite well in the past. So, um, do we have a motion recommending uh, approval of the draft ordinance to the board of a, of aldermen and also to approve the design guidelines as proposed, Mr. Chair? Very quickly, yes. I just wanted to to remind everyone this is a public hearing, so. Uh, we do need to at least ask the public if, if anyone would like to speak on this matter prior to the vote. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, as um, Mr. Gibson has already said, uh, is anyone in the audience desiring to speak on this item? I don't see any hands up. Do you, David? I do not. Okay. There is a raise hand button on your screen there. If anyone wants to speak, please uh, please press that button now. I don't see any speakers, sir. No. Oh, here we go. Got one. Mr. Uh, Hank Winkleman, I will bring him over. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Hank. Good evening. Would can you, you like hear to... me? Yes, we can hear you. We don't see you, but that's okay. Uh, do you have further comments on uh, this change to Chapter 410? Well, I think uh, many of you know that I've made incredible efforts to understand, to share with you the whole form-based work. And I really must say, the initial iterations of the work by H3, it seemed very inappropriate. And 
I had very much hoped to participate in some of the meetings that might have been with the steering committee and share some of the graphic documentation that I had built using their language and words and statistics to present it as a three-dimensional set of forms to understand what was being proposed. So I lost awareness of the steering committee meeting in November. I would have loved to have joined you on your site walk in September. Could have made some really powerful points with that. So I haven't had a chance, I'm, like many people with COVID and other issues, a little isolated and not following the progress with this. So I haven't been able to go to the new details and sort of build it as a model of what it tells us. I think you've begun to embrace some very, very important issues about the ground level and visibility and openness. And I think this issue of the width of sidewalks is a continuing challenge for planners and Clayton to begin to address and recognize. So I know you all feel a certain confidence and unfortunately it's difficult to leap into the belief, but you're in the driver's seat, and I hope you'll find the way to continue to, let's call it, in, be more inclusive in planning work and create opportunities for sharing of thoughts and criticism. The Zoom capabilities that sort of go back to conversations in August make it very difficult. You've made your decisions, and I hope we'll all continue to find ways to contribute to community planning and architecture for Clayton. And I really appreciated Ira's sensitivity that he had expressed in a meeting about the importance of architecture, and he was referring to his visit to Austin, not really knowing what he was seeing and how it might inform or have been a part of this. Very interesting, but those are my thoughts. Okay, thanks Hank. We appreciate your comments. David, was there any other hand raised? No, sir. No, okay. Well, then we can go on with a motion at this point. I'll make a motion that we recommend the approval of the draft ordinance for the Northeast Downtown Overlay District to the Board of Aldermen and approve the design guidelines as proposed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I opposed. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And we'll close that public hearing. And then we will move on to item number two, which is another public hearing. And we will proceed with it. So we will open the public hearing now. And Denisa, if you'd like to proceed. This is a public hearing to receive public input and consider tax amendments to chapter 410 related to the expansion of the existing entertainment overlay district. The existing overlay district was adopted by the Board of Aldermen on May 28, 2019. The proposed amendment is to expand the existing district both to the west and south. The expansion to the west extends the existing district from Merrimack Avenue to Brentwood Boulevard. The expansion to the south extends the existing district from Forsyth Boulevard to Carondelet Avenue. The proposed amendment only changes the boundaries of the district and does not alter any other aspect of the entertainment district overlay. The proposed expansion will build on the existing uses. 
This area is still within walking distance of many residential areas and hotels. The intent of the proposed overlay district is to attract new businesses that would otherwise have difficulty locating within the central business district. The proposed expansion of the overlay would allow staff, the plan commission, and the board of aldermen through the CUP process to evaluate the entertainment entertainment component of proposed businesses and approve a reduction in requirements of a liquor license. This would allow venues such as a jazz club, which would likely not get at least 50% of its revenue from food sales to locate in Clayton. Staff is of the opinion that the proposed regulations and the CUP process will provide sufficient mitigations of any potential negative impacts. Staff recommends the plan commission recommend approval of the tax amendment expanding the entertainment overlay zoning district to the Board of Aldermen as proposed. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are in a, a public hearing. We have looked at this uh, before. Um, I think it's a valid direction to go at this point, and it may open up uh, some more opportunities within our downtown area. But let's uh, go around and see uh, other comments. Carolyn? Um, I actually I had no comments again. So um, it's good to me. Actually, before we go further, uh, I see Gary Carter is with us now. Gary, do you have any further comments on this? Uh, just briefly, Steve, this dates back to the original um, establishment of the entertainment district based on a, a strategic planning retreat of the Board of Aldermen desire for more vibrancy in downtown. This current iteration that's before you tonight comes from another uh, retreat the board recently held uh, earlier this year, uh, seeking to expand the district to provide more opportunity for those uses. Okay, thank you. Um, Carolyn, uh, did you have anything further? Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, George? Nothing from my end. Okay. Helen? No comment. It looks good. Ira? Yeah, I mean, this is a very important step for the city, so I'm very, very um, supportive uh, of going in this direction. We, uh, you know, we need to provide and, and try and obtain more opportunities for entertainment and vibrancy in our downtown, especially after the dinner hour, uh, so that we can encourage uh, more feet on the ground, uh, you know, more young people, uh, and uh, continue to get our city back to uh, a, a demographic that, you know, uh, it includes all sorts of people and all sorts of interests. So uh, this is one step in that right direction. And the, uh, the level of entertainment, quality of entertainment, the kind of entertainment uh, is all up to uh, what the market will be. And I think it's a great step in, in the right direction. So. Okay, thanks, Ira. David? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Uh, do we have anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Again, please use the raise hand feature if you'd like to speak during this public hearing. No speaker, sir. No speaker, thank you. Uh, we do have a staff recommendation to recommend approval of this text amendment uh, to the Board of Aldermen as proposed. And do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, uh to approve uh, the staff recommendation. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, that sounds very good. We'll close the uh, public hearing at this point and move on to old business. And before we start, 
do we have the uh, applicant for 8101 in the attendee list? We do. Um, Deb Duda is representing the applicant, David. Also, I have a question. Um, there's a question in the chat about uh, whether or not questions um, will be allowed from the public on the um, conceptual review at the end. I can answer that. Uh, and we, we will only be doing a conceptual review, which has no uh, vote on it. And uh, there is nothing binding on any of the parties, either the applicant or the plan commission. Uh, so no, at this point, we will not be taking public uh, comments uh, at that time. However, we have received many letters uh, from the public that have been distributed to everyone on the plan commission. Uh, they will also be distributed to the applicant and we will reserve time when, if and when they come back with a formal approval uh, to have a full public hearing uh, where anyone who wishes to speak may do so. So hopefully that answers the question in the chat box. Mr. Chair, I would add one other um public component to this. So the proposed uh, project that we have the, the concept plans for, uh, they are proposing to use plan unit development zoning or PUD zoning. As a requirement of, of that particular rezoning process, the developer is required to hold a community conference. So this is a meeting between the developer and interested parties within the community uh, prior to the application actually going through the process and being reviewed. So we don't have a, an application to review it at this point in time, uh, but if they do decide to um, submit an application, again, they will be required to have a community conference and the public will be able to, to weigh in there, ask questions of the developer. The developer would then provide a report to the city that would be considered uh, through the formal uh, rezoning process, which also has public hearings about the plan commission and at the Board of Aldermen level. So uh, there will be lots of opportunity for public input on that particular project uh, should they move forward with a, a formal submittal. Okay, thank you. Any other comments before we move forward? No, then we will go back to the old business and start with item one, 8101 Clayton Road. Anissa? Hey. This is for the review of the design and materials of signage for an existing retail building. This project was continued from the December 6th meeting at the request of the applicant. The subject property is located northwest of the intersection of South Brentwood Boulevard and Clayton Road and is the site of a CVS pharmacy. The existing signage was approved by the ARB in 2013. The existing signage on the building includes 178.92 square feet of signage per the two elevations with street frontage. Red window graphics on the western doors of the front elevation were approved administratively by staff in 2014. The applicant is proposing a total of six wall signs. Total square footage on the Clayton Road elevation will measure 143.86 square feet, and total square footage on the Brentwood Boulevard elevation will measure 174.96 square feet. Similar to the existing window graphics, the applicant is also proposing red vinyl window graphics. Additionally, the existing vinyl ground sign will be resurfaced with no changes to square footage proposed. In terms of wall signage, the sign code limits wall signage to 15, 15 square feet or 5% of the wall area up to a maximum of 250 square feet for single tenant buildings. The proposed signage for each elevation is less than 250 square feet. It should also be noted that the proposed signage is above the first floor ceiling level as is the existing signage. Given the large distance between the building and Clayton Road, staff is of the opinion that the position of the wall signage on the building is appropriate. As noted previously, window graphics were approved administratively provided that the total area of signage, wall signs and window graphics combined did not exceed 250 square feet. The proposed signage on the Clayton Road elevation, including window signage, exceeds 250 square feet at 371 square feet. 
Staff is of the opinion that the vinyl window graphics and vinyl window signs should be reduced so that only the bottom half of the windows are covered, similar to the existing window graphics on the western portion of the windows. Our recommendation is to approve with the following conditions prior to issuance of a sign permit. First, that the applicant revises the window graphics so that no more than the bottom half of the windows are covered with vinyl window graphics and or vinyl window signage. Second, a planting plan for the ground sign shall be provided to staff at the time of sign permit application. This concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see uh, Deb Duda. Oh, thank you for unmuting yourself. Do you have anything to add to the staff report? Um, I just wanted to make a comment regarding the window graphics. Um, the reason for the excessive uh, window graphics on there is to identify the minute clinic that is over on the right hand side of the building. Um, the other uh, vinyl graphics that are on the building are just going to be replaced. Um, they are half the window size. Um, and as far as the planting plan, um, we would be happy to take care of that for the city or for CVS um, and um, get something um, aesthetically put in. Um, however, I would like a suggestion from the council or um, either CVS as to what type of uh, plants they would like or if they would like mulch um, put in for something decorative in that area for the monument. And I guess that's it. And we'd be happy, we'll also update the book once we know. Okay. Um, Carolyn, do you have any uh, comment on what the applicant was requesting on the planting? Um, without knowing the total square feet, it's hard for me to say right now, but there, there are plant lists that you can look up um, if you want to go with native, but I'm not sure that's mm -hmm. have their own design standards um, for the projects. No, not, not particularly. No, it would have to be, you know, it, every place has got their own location and their own um, type of plants uh, that go well with the climates and different things. And we'd like to put something in there that, you know, would be low lying because this, the monument is uh, uh, very low to the ground um, and it needs to be visible. So um, I can look that up and, and put, well, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. There's there are tons of plants that would work uh, low ground covers. Sure, but you know, liriope comes to mind. You know, purple, purple poppy mallow is beautiful. It's okay, easily. it doesn't get All right. twelve inches. All right. I mean, I could give you a gazillion options, but we're actually okay. we're we're headed over there in about one hour to get our booster shots. <laughs> A look if you wanted to contact me through this this you know planning commission i would talk. yeah i will I, I can give you a call tomorrow and we can discuss it yeah <laughs> yeah it's hard for me to tell from from the drawings so. right thanks i didn't have any other comments so i agree with yeah. the staff comments uh i felt that the staff comments were uh, valuable uh, but does anyone else have any comments on either number one or number two of the conditions? I have a quick question. Are the the window signs that, that take up much of the window, uh, it, they're just red with a design on those. So are those for branding purposes or for privacy purposes as well? Um, it Both, actually. Okay. Yes, I do have a question, a similar question. Um, my concern is having all of the graphics, the full graphic on the door. Is that door the entrance door or just exit or is to it be honest? Um, to be honest, I think it's um, an entrance to the minute clinic. Um, and right now they have shades uh, that are, um, they use for that area that I've seen on, on pictures um, that cover up the entire door and windows. That still concerns me. The door mm -hmm. swing would swing out. Mm -hmm. And if I'm walking by, I could be hit in the face or if I'm going to enter, I don't know if anybody is walking, you know, coming out. So I see that as a 
safety hazard that generally in a commercial setting, you have some ability to see the other side. So you know if that door, if there was someone on the other side who was coming in the opposite direction. Um, so, but I do agree with the staff recommendations um, beyond just that concern. Okay, that's understandable. Mr. Chair, would it be helpful if I brought that, that picture up so everyone could take a look at the same time? Yes. The rendering of the, the graphics? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one on the right is what Helen was referring to, correct, Helen? Yes. Okay. And Helen, would you uh, feel that if it were cut down to half the height, would that work? Or did you feel that the door itself should have no graphic on it? My preference would be that the door itself have no graphic on it because privacy is not an issue when you've got a door that is, anybody can open it from either side. Privacy should not be a concern. Um, you know, in the other areas, I think the half would be better. It would tie in with the other side of the building and certainly privacy would not be a concern if the a commercial door is roughly seven feet high. Above that, people can't see in and people can't see out. Uh, so there is no privacy issue there. Um, So I would prefer to have it eliminated at the door and then the same height as the other windows. Are you referring to the minute clinic and the, on the signage there? Or just keep that in the corner? Yes, have all of the um, window treatments at the same height and eliminate it at the door. Okay which would also eliminate the graphics above the door and above the minute clinic sign. Right. Yeah. So in essence, the only thing at the minute clinic would be the white sign with the red lettering and logo on it. And the door, the side light and the windows above would remain clear. Yeah. Okay, we can get you some new drawings on that then too. Yes. Okay, um, any other comments from the commission members or the, uh, the board members, sorry. I would say that I'd agree with Helen's comments on that one, that, that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Ira? Would any, sorry, would any- I don't have any comments. <laughs> Carol? Yeah, I just, I wonder um, for Deb, is, is, has there been any, any discussion about making that a sliding door as opposed to a door that's opened? Abroad? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, because I was going to say then that, you know, dissuades the issue because you mm -hmm. can yeah. well before they even walk through the door. Okay. okay. Uh, any other comment? No? Well, uh, we do have two conditions recommended by staff. Uh, do we have a motion including those? Yeah, I'll make a motion um, that we approve the staff conditions. Um, uh, do I need to say anything about the door not being covered or just? Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, Approved with the staff recommendations, uh, amending number one to include that the door should not be covered with the graphics um, for pedestrian safety. Uh -huh. 
and maintaining number two um, as staff recommended. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, Deb. Thank you, Carolyn. I'll get in touch with you tomorrow then. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on to new business now. And the first item is number 29 West Brentmore Park. Anissa? Okay. This is for the review of the design and materials associated with a 1,667 square foot addition. The 65,573 square foot lot is located mid block on the north side of Brentmore Park. The proposed project consists of a single story addition on the east side of the home. The project also includes the expansion of the concrete paper driveway, a fire pit in the rear yard, and a hot tub to the rear slash north of the proposed addition. The primary building material for the proposed addition is brick veneer painted white to match the principal structure. White casement windows are featured on each elevation of the addition with stone headers. Staff is of the opinion that the design and materials of the proposed addition are compatible with the home and the surrounding area as all materials are proposed to match the existing. Additionally, the applicant has proposed to extend the existing concrete paver driveway on the portion of the drive adjacent to the west side of the home. Also depicted on the plans are a proposed parking slash basketball area within the front setback. Parking spaces are not permitted within the front yard setback of residential zoning districts and staff has advised the applicant of this requirement to which they agreed to comply. The project as proposed with modification is in conformance with the requirements of the R1 large lot single family dwelling district and the architectural review guidelines. Staff is of the opinion that the design and materials are compatible with the home and with the neighborhood character. Our recommendation is to approve with one condition to be addressed prior to issuance of the building permit that the proposed parking slash basketball area must be removed from the plan as it is located within the front yard setback. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. I see David Pape is here. Uh, David, if you could unmute yourself and give us any comments. David, do you hear us? Yes. There, okay. Do you have any? Uh, Thing to add to the staff report? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, a very nice addition. It certainly fits into both the uh, design of the home and the context of the neighborhood uh, which it sits in. And uh, it looks good to me. I do think that uh, the staff recommendation is a valid one and should be uh, approved. Let's go around uh, the room. Carolyn. Can we hear from the audience if there are any people who have anything they want to say. Oh, we will. Okay. We'll, we'll do our uh, people first. So, Carolyn. Yeah, um, I agreed with the staff recommendation as well. Um, otherwise, I think it's a gorgeous house and it's a really nice plan. George? I have no additional comments. Helen? No comments. I like it. Thank you. Ira? No comments. And David? No comments. And do we have any hands up? If anyone in the attendee audience would like to speak, please uh, push the hand up button. No, I don't no see hands. any. Okay. Well, we do have a staff recommendation uh, to approve with one condition. And uh, do we have a motion to that? I'll make a motion to approve with the staff recommendation. Second. All, all in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank good you. luck with the project, David, and thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Steve, I'd like to make a point of order. Is it possible I can do that? Certainly. I, I think I just think it makes more sense for the public to make their comments before we make comments. So many times our comments become very conclusory. And I think it's important that we hear from the public first before we end up making our comments in any conclusory fashion. It's a good point. Thank you, Ira. We'll, uh, I'll try to remember that process. If not, you'll remind me. <laughs> and I promise I will, uh, I will try. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go on to um, new business number two, which is 8182 Maryland. And Anista, we're ready to go. Okay. This is for the review of the design and materials of renovations to the Maryland Avenue and Forsyth Boulevard streetscape of 8182 Maryland. The subject property is located on the south side of Maryland Avenue, southeast of its intersection with Forsyth Boulevard. The property has a zoning designation of special development district and is located in the Maryland Gateway Overlay District. The project consists of renovations to the entry and pedestrian walkway areas. The existing stairs and walls at the entry areas are comprised of concrete and red brick. The proposed stairs will be integral color hand rubbed concrete stairs with the wall to match. Along the wall and the stairs will be ornamental metal guardrails and handrails similar to those found at the neighboring 8235 Forsyth Boulevard property to the immediate south. Benches will be located along the stairway entries on both street elevations. A ground sign is shown on the rendering but is not depicted within the plans or the scope of work. A separate application will be required for the ground sign. The vision for the Maryland Gateway notes that Maryland Avenue shall balance accommodating traffic with the need for greater walkability and improving the pedestrian experience. The removal of the large planters along Maryland Avenue and their replacement with seating areas enhances the pedestrian feel in this area. However, staff has several concerns with several aspects of the proposed revisions to this streetscape, which are not consistent with city streetscape design. The spacing of the proposed streetlights is incompatible with city standards. The arrangement of the proposed streetlights has several lights located in close proximity to each other. In order to reduce large pockets of light and minimize glare, these lights should be as evenly positioned as possible according to the public works standard of 44 feet. Additionally, there are conflicts between the proposed street trees along Maryland and the streetlights. Furthermore, the trees along Maryland Avenue create pinch points in the pedestrian access route of the sidewalk. A permanent roadway maintenance and utility easement is therefore necessary to maintain an ADA accessible route within the PAR. Furthermore, the landscape plan references specifications for the tree wells that are different than the Clayton standards and city standards must be matched for all objects located in the right of way. Staff is of the opinion that the proposed alterations will create a more functional space. Proposed materials are compatible with the building and surrounding properties and will be a visual improvement to the existing building entrance. However, several modifications are necessary in order to bring the streetscape into compliance with city standards. Staff's recommendation is to approve with the following modifications to the proposed design to be addressed prior to issuance of the building permit. First, a separate ARB and sign permit application shall be submitted for the proposed ground sign along Forsyth Boulevard. Second, the spacing of the lights along Maryland Avenue shall be adjusted in, adjusted in accordance to city standards. Lighting installation shall consist of the following, seven new lights along Maryland and extending the two inch electrical conduit to the Eastern project limits, installing lights per Clayton standard C16, one quad, two roadway and four single head fixtures and installing a new electric handhole at the Eastern project limits. All proposed trees along Maryland Avenue shall be shifted to avoid conflicts with the streetscape lights in accordance with city standards and all trees and all tree species planted in the right of way must be approved by Clayton Public Works. An irrigation system shall be provided for all the new trees in accordance with city standards. Finally, a permanent roadways 
roadway maintenance and utility easement is required to maintain a pedestrian access route throughout the project limits. This must be submitted to Clayton Public Works prior to completion of the project. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. I see we have both Chris Mertens and Mike Shadle online. Would one or both of you like to uh, give further comments on the staff report? Uh, yes, sir. Good, e good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Architectural Review Board. My name is Mike Shadle, and I represent the owner of 8182 Maryland Avenue Office Tower. We appreciate the opportunity to present our plans for renovating the outdoor space surrounding this building. As part of this project, we would like to replace the planter boxes, walkways, and other perimeter spaces located on our property. Most of the existing structures in these areas are failing and look tired. Um, in addition, we believe that replacing much of the surface area will minimize possible water damage to the garage, which is located directly beneath this area. Since we're doing a lot of outside work on our property, we have also been working with city staff to include the city's streetscape design to the sidewalk area adjacent to Maryland Avenue. Currently, there is no um, city street along that area, uh, streetscape design. We are excited about this project because we believe it will enhance the pedestrian field for both our tenants and also for residents. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chris Mertens with ACI Bolin, our architect for the project. Thank you, Mike. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Chris Mertens. I'm an architect with ACI Bolin Architects, 17107 Chesapeake Airport Road, 63005. Uh, as Mike said, we're working with property owners at 8182 to update their existing streetscape. Uh, along Maryland Avenue and also at the corner of Forsyth Boulevard. <clears throat> As Mike mentioned, there are several areas along the existing planters and stairs that are failing and need repair from a leakage standpoint, damage standpoint, and, and the planters themselves are breaking down from years of just exposure out in, out in the elements. Uh, also part of this concern is the damage from the water issues leaking into the garage and the concerns of the long-term effects in the garage and the tenant parking below. Uh, as Mike said, as part of this process, we're taking the opportunity to uh, rebuild the exterior stairs, the streetscape, but then also to, be, to create some more outdoor pedestrian gathering areas with benches along the streetscape, and both along Maryland and along Forsyth. Uh, part of the process too, is to try to widen the, to widen the feel of the sidewalk from a narrow, very narrow, tight feel to a more spacious, uh, easier to be meandered down the sidewalk along Maryland Avenue. Uh, as Anissa pointed out, we are working with staff on providing new trees and streetscape lights <clears throat> along Maryland, which as Mike said, currently there are no streetscape lights, streetscape lights along Maryland. And then also as part of the process, we are uh, providing a new accessible building entry ramp there at the corner of Maryland and Forsyth. Our plan is to use very similar benches, railings, guardrails, things of that sort, the same as the building at 8235, which has also similar ownership to try to help create a unified look between the two buildings. That's my additional comments. I uh, thank you for your time and consideration. And if anybody has any comments or questions, myself or Mr. Shade will be glad to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thanks Mike and Chris. Um, Basically, I think it looks really pretty good and improves on some of the problems that you're having right now. I do have a couple questions. Uh, at the intersection of Forsyth and Maryland, uh, the seating area, uh, I think, is a great addition there. Uh, however, it seems like it might be an area that will collect leaves and other potential debris, especially in fall and winter uh, seasons of the year. Um, uh, I think we just need to make sure that since it is on private property that it will be maintained correctly. And I have no doubt that uh, it will be maintained properly. My second question is on the Maryland Avenue side, when you go back uh, to relocating the light standards and the trees, are any of the trees going to fall in front of any of the three stairs 
going up to the podium to enter the building. Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to answer that question for you. Uh, in our original design and layout of the lights and tree wells, we had arranged such that none of the lights nor the tree wells would fall in front of the three stair entrances to try to minimize the pinch point. Uh, there we go. So as you can see in the diagram that's been brought up on the screen there, you can see that the three entry stairs, they are very clean and have a lot of free space in front of them, uh, whether it be a tree or whether it be from a light standard. Uh, after this, after we made this submission, we were informed of the 44 foot rule or recommendation from staff to space the lights out along Maryland Avenue every 44 feet. And that tree had to be within the 11 feet of the light standard themselves. By doing this, uh, kind of the way it shifted out, shakes out from a staffing layout, uh, unfortunately, it does create a couple points. Um, there is the second, uh, what I'll say this, what will become the second street lamp in front of the stairwell there on the plan left, creates a pinch point. And then also again, on the far right-hand set of stairs, there would be a street lamp there that could create a pinch point also in front of those stairs. So as I said, as we work this work through the process with staff, we're trying to find the best accommodation for stair locations to match what's existing there today. And then also the light layout for ease of flow from a pedestrian traffic standpoint. So um, we're in that process, but that's a, a long answer to a, a short question. Thanks, Chris. The one at the eastern stairway looks like it may have the tightest pinch point. Is that correct? And uh, what would the uh, dimension be? Um, you're correct. That probably is probably under the current layout. That is probably the could be the tightest pinch point. Um, and that dimension is approximately. I'd be glad to give that to you. Approximately five and a half feet. Currently or uh, when a tree goes in, in place? In the tree well itself or in the light standard? I'm sorry. Um, uh, well, it seems like the tree well would be a tighter pinch point. Um, along the eastern side, that seems to have plenty of room hit the tree well to the stair, that's probably 12 feet-ish. But if one ends up in front of the stair, what would be left and would it be ADA accessible? So in front of the stair to the curb, is that what you're asking? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's approximately that's approximately seven feet today. And seven. would and remain that same distance. Okay. Uh, but then the tree well could be within that seven feet. That's correct. <clears throat> Along the eastern side, but we've we've accounted for or allowed, I should say, for a path between the tree well and the benches there on the very far eastern side. And as again, as we work our way across the plane going to the right, I would have five feet between the, the lamp pole and the stairwell through there. I have about five and a half feet, which is which is a little more than what's required. And then I have the seven feet in front of the stairwell on that first stair on the plan left. And then again, I've maintained my five feet. I'm, yes, thank you for the cursor. I've maintained my five feet, five foot path uh, to the next lamp pole, the tree well. And again, I've main, I've kept the pinch point of about six feet from the next tree well to the stair, to the middle stair. And then again, as I continue to move down the, down the way towards Forsyth going to the right, uh, I've maintained the five feet very easily. And then when we get back down to the far right hand or westerly stair between that and the tree well, that's about seven feet from, yep, from that tree well to the, the pylon of the stair. That's under the current arrangement of tree wells and light standards is what we have shown currently. Uh, again, as 
if, if the light standards need to be reshuffled to meet the 44 foot requirement, that presents a whole nother challenges and may change the layout. And again, that creates some pinch points based on the city's recommendation of the 44 feet spacing of the light standards. Okay. Well, um, I think I followed uh, the dimensions that you gave us. Um, of course, you're going to be working it out with the staff for the oh, yes. new, uh, uh, the uh, light and tree well location. So yes. we will leave that. But of course, we're very interested to maintain the ADA uh, accessible dimensions in there. So are we. Mr. Chairman, but, I just, if, if I don't mind, I hate to interrupt. <clears throat> well, I just wanted to add. So, you know, we have some challenges here because the, the sidewalk right away is very narrow in comparison to many other parts within the central business district, um, especially when, when you talk about the stair areas. And so we've tried to maintain uh, clear sight lines uh, coming from the building as, as tenants and, and people come down those steps. Uh, you have a lot of things going on now that, that you haven't had in the last couple of months. Uh, we have a bike lane now. Uh, so it creates a little more activity immediately adjacent to the sidewalk as opposed to when we had cars parked there. So we're just a little concerned about putting any, any items in the sight line area or the walkway area near those steps because, uh, again, it's, it's seven feet or less. Uh, through most of that area because our property line uh, comes all the way out pretty close to that, um, basically at the end of the uh, end of those steps. Uh, so that's 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 a good picture right there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it shows the narrowness and then it shows exactly what happens when you start putting those existing trees clearly aren't following the current streetscape guidelines. But as you know, once you start putting those grates in, the trees are moved farther towards the prop our property line it creates some challenges on the ADA. So again, we were just trying to, um, I guess, really allocate this, the, the trees and, and lamps in a way that it could help with pedestrian access uh, and minimize some of the sight lines that are, are challenging along this area because it becomes pretty busy. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, I think this, uh, this photo really shows where the problem is. Um, you know, as we said, and it's in the staff recommendation that uh, the streetscape would be addressed prior to issuance of the building permit. We'll allow the uh, owner and the architect to work with staff on that. And uh, I'm sure it can be worked out to everyone's benefit. So thank you. Let's uh, see uh, what comments we have from the board. Carolyn. Yeah, um, I understand about the, the pinch point on the, the two left end of the stairs um, that are located there. The other one I'm not quite sure about. Um, one of the questions I have first though is uh, the existing trees, are they not, they're not being saved at all? They're just being taken out? That's correct. They would be replaced. Um, the other, the other question or suggestion I have, um, would be, I look at the plan. Um, it, it seems like if, if it's not going to be the exact 44 feet or the, you know, 11 feet, um, of the trees in between, um, I think you should center the trees on between the stairs, um, equally. So that it makes more sense right now, it's just sort of random. If you look at, I can't do a cursor, but the second uh, bay from the left, yeah, that one, that really just makes me a little crazy, um, just as a landscape architect. So reworking, you know, the paving pattern, or whatever you have to do to get them lined up and work with the city, and you know, even all of them need to be you know, spaced out so that they make more sense. If, if you are going to be able to change the actual required spacing of the city standard. And I'm jumping ahead on that. But if, if that is allowed, um, we have to deal with the idea of this sets of precedent, of course, um, but this is an existing building. So it's not like you're proposing changing the standard. You have to work around what you have um, there. You have no room to put a tree in there or even a light. 
Um, the other question I, I would have is, or not question, another comment I have is, you know, people being able to see or walk around a, a six inch trunk tree at probably the maturity when it's an urban condition, maybe eight inch tree, they, they can see around it. I mean, that's like me going like this. I can't, I can still see you. I, you're right there. So I don't think the visibility is, is much of an issue. I think it's more of the fact that there's no ADA room for a sidewalk um, through where those two staircases are. So that has to get worked out. Um, I don't know how staff is going to handle that, but um, my suggestion would be it has to be handled. There's no way around it, right? So otherwise, I think it looks good. Okay, thanks, Carolyn. George? Um, I, th I think the comments have been made, and I, I trust staff to be able to work through the ADA issues in the sidewalk on those stairwells, and um, I have no further comments. Okay, Helen? I especially like the revised corner intersection at Maryland and Forsyth, where the, what I would call disappearing steps have totally been removed and you have a ramp and you've given that space that there's the existing shows two risers and then it disappears into almost zero. That, that's an extremely dangerous situation for walking. And especially when we get a little bit of ice on the ground, um, two risers, even in good conditions, the eye doesn't perceive that change in depth and it can be a falling hazard. So while it may have looked as like a gracious entrance with the steps and just a, a few risers, I think what you're proposing now is far, far better. So I like it and I trust, yes, you can work with staff to work out the tree wells and the light standards. Okay, thanks, Helen. Ira? Yeah, right. I mean, my only comment is, you know, making sure that uh, yeah, staff does, is aware and of course the applicant is aware of, of uh, standards for accessibility. Um, and as long as uh, that can get taken care of, I'm okay with this. Okay, David. Just so we're clear on that direction to staff, uh, what I'm hearing is that the plan commission or ARB in this case is, is okay uh, with this particular configuration that moves the tree wells and lights away from the staircase. Is that correct? Which yeah. is which is basically the elimination of condition one on any approval. I just want to make sure staff knows the parameters when, when working with the applicant because the streetscape, streetscape standards as they're written are basically what you see in the condition. And it's it's very uh, it's very rigid as far as the, the placement. And so I just want to make sure that the, the plan commission is is okay uh, with that deviation in this case to line up the trees. Uh, and the lights with these these pockets, I'll call them, uh, in between the uh, stair areas. Well, for me, I believe, I believe what we were hearing was uh, that it should be a more regular spacing of the trees. Uh, and if they can avoid the pinch points, that would work, even if we have to deviate somewhat from the 44 and 11 foot dimensions. Great. I just I wanted to make sure everybody was, was clear on that and uh, that will help public works and planning staff as, as they work through it with the applicant. That's okay. all I have. Can I say something? Ira? Yeah, no, I, I think, I, you know, I can't tell in a, in, a, in a visual like this what kind of room there really is for a wheelchair access to go along that sidewalk uh, with the trees, whether they're where they are or where they, you know, whether you move them a little bit. Um, I would also be a little bit concerned if we're going to have trees that would would in any way hover over a bike path with bikers riding through and perhaps branches having an issue uh, for a, bike, a bicycle rider. Um, so I don't know how that can be rectified as well. But the uh, you know we are we are looking at two two issues with this on the sidewalk and wheelchair accessibility is is one. 
and then biker accessibility being the other. Absolutely. Any further comments? Or that might be a, a situation where they specify um, a more columnar shaped tree as opposed to a, a tree that branches like this, a branch like this. So that, that comes down to specification of the tree type for sure. But I agree with that comment 100%. Okay. Uh, Mike, uh, your hand is still up. Do you have further comments? Sorry, it wasn't supposed to be up. I didn't know it was not up, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, I did not see any other hands come up. Did you, David? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Well, we do have um, a staff recommendation to approve with the, uh, 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 with certain items to be addressed prior to the issuance of the building permit. And there are five separate conditions that have been um, attached to it. If there are no other questions, do we have a motion? I'll take a stab at it. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve um, with amending staff recommendations one through three um to be um uh the project team will work directly with the city staff to ensure that um the spacing of the trees and the lighting um is worked out to meet ada and um standards the city standards as best as possible and then uh maintaining uh, numbers four and five as is written Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike and Chris. Um, you'll be working with the staff and we look forward to it being installed. Thank you for everybody for your time and consideration. And yes, we will thank definitely you. be working with staff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, we have come to the final item, which is a conceptual review. And as we stated before, uh, this conceptual review is not a public hearing. Uh, this will allow the plan commission members, uh, as well as the public who's uh, tuned in to hear the proposal from the applicant. Uh, uh, but there will be no vote and no binding statements uh, on any party. And all of the information that has already been received from several uh, um, interested parties, citizens and some not citizens, uh, will be distributed back to the applicant. And uh, in the future, if and when they, the applicant gives a formal application, will be able to have a full public hearing and the public will certainly be invited to comment at that time. So with that, uh, Anissa, if you'd like to begin on the 8230-8260 Forsyth Boulevard. Okay. This is for the conceptual review of the proposed design of a new residential development, including parking and condominiums. The project site includes two parcels located southwest of the intersection of Maryland Avenue and Forsyth Boulevard adjacent to the shops building. The properties have a zoning designation of C1 Neighborhood Commercial District. The site is currently improved with one and two story buildings and a surface parking lot. Adjacent land uses include retail, office, and residential. The proposed project consists of the demolition of the existing buildings and the construction of a four-story, 42-unit condominium building with an 86-space parking garage located in the basement of the building. The square footage of the proposed building will measure 165,020 square feet with an approximate height of 45 to 48 feet. Vehicle access to the garage is proposed on Forsyth Boulevard. Primary building materials were not identified in the submittal. 
The project is proposed as a residential planned unit development and will require public hearings before the plan commission and the board of aldermen. As noted in the application, the applicant is seeking the PUD zoning due to the narrow depth of the existing parcels and the subsequent challenge of the setback requirements, as well as an increase in the allowable height. The existing zoning designation is, is C1 General Commercial District. Therefore, the property must first be rezoned to a residential zoning district before it may be rezoned to a residential PUD. The northern parcel of the proposed project is also located in the Maryland Gateway Overlay District as identified in the Downtown Clayton Master Plan. The vision of the Maryland Gateway is to create a memorable and representative entry to the core of the city and to transform the area from an auto-focused right-of-way to a human-focused corridor. The portion of the property that is located in the Maryland Gateway will have to be removed from the district through the rezoning process because the overlay district does not allow single use residential land uses. A project of this scale requires a thorough staff review prior to a public hearing. The project will be reviewed and is subject to comments by multiple city departments and also the city's contracted consultants for landscaping, architecture, stormwater management, traffic and parking. Staff recommends that the plan commission and architectural review board consider the proposal and provide input. This is conceptual review only and therefore any comments made in this report, either by the applicant, staff, or the board commission members are not binding. Comments from the planning department and public works department are noted on page two of the staff report. This concludes the staff presentation. Okay, thank you, Anissa. Uh, I see uh, we have two people from the applicant group, uh, David Robert and uh, Stephen Method. Uh, who would like to uh, comment on the staff report? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first one, to um, it's David. Hello, everyone. It's good to see everyone again. Um, thanks for allowing us back. We appreciate all your help on the residence center across the street. It's been a, uh, off to a good start. Uh, Steve is, is shared. Um, Steve will, our Steve will share the screen. And we're here to talk about um, uh, across the street from the residence inn, there's two parcels that we'd like to present some initial plans for. Uh, the, the two buildings have been vacant for a long time and, and honestly are, in, are not the greatest shape. We want to kind of share with you what we have planned. Uh, Steve, you want to go to the next slide? Sure. And so this is uh, one of the buildings across the street. It's a two-story office building that's uh, again across the on Forsyth on the bend there. Next, Steve. This is another angle of that uh, two-story office building. Again, this one is uh, built in the 50s um, and it is, um, it's been vacant for many years. Um, been in the building and uh, we've, we've studied the building and inside of the building is it not, uh, it's, it's in pretty disarray. It's uh, pretty much at the end of its lifespan from, a, from an operation standpoint. Um, we've, uh, we've looked at this building hard uh, we like to recycle buildings. Uh, that's something that we try to do all the time. So we looked at this building really hard to try and do that. Uh, and the more we looked at it, the more we realized that the, the economics just did not work with the condition of the building um, and the cost to, to, to bring it up to something that would make sense. Uh, and you'd still at the end of the day, just have a, a, a two-story build, two-story office building. And then what really made it tough was that, uh, go to the next slide, Steve, as right next door is the old gas station. So um, if, we, if we kept the, the two-story office building and, and redid it, you still would have this gas station next door um, that would really be very difficult to, to develop uh, on its own. You really kind of need both parcels put together to make something that kind of makes sense on this, on this site. All right, next, Steve. And then here's just another slide of, uh, of the uh, it was gas station. And I think it became a, a dry cleaning service at one point right next to Straub's. Next. So here's just a, a, just to show you what's there now. This is the, uh, the survey of what's there now. You can see the two-story office building on, on the right and then the uh, get old gas station on the left. So we're talking about combining both parcels together. Next. Then here would be a, a footprint of what we're proposing. Uh, again, our, we're going to be a four-story building, a uh, total of 42 condos. We've curved the building to match this, the uh, Forsyth curve. 
Uh, so the building, is, you can see it curved in the front there. Um, mostly two bedroom, two bath, three bedroom, three bath, 2,500 square feet to 3,500 square feet of condos. Uh, we do have an amenity space on the first level that would be on the Straub side, would be beside Straub's. And then if you look over to the right, you'll see the, the garage access, uh, which would be all four sides, but it would lead to a garage level that's below in the basement on the lower level. Uh, next, Steve. This is what the lower level would look like. Again, we have all our parking um, below grade, so it would really not have any of the headlights would be interfering with any of the residents behind us. Uh, we've tried it. We've got all our parking below grade. Uh, next. And then this would be uh, what the, the three upper floors would look like. Again, they would be uh, condos 2,500 to 3,500 square feet. Um, we've got, we don't have a ton of amenities in the building because really we, we're in, the, with this location, you have a lot of great amenities around you with, with Shaw Park and Center for Clayton, shops, groceries and restaurants. So uh, we're able to do something really nice here, some nice luxury condos. And they, and because of the location, have great uh, amenities around us. Uh, next. And so this is, uh, is what we're proposing from a rendering standpoint. Uh, Steve, you wanna kind of share what we're thinking on material wise here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the, the uh, hang on a second, let me get to a. You're sharing the wrong screen, Steve. I'm trying. There you go. All right. Uh, yeah, so the, the, you know, when we looked at this site uh, and looked at the multifamily residential uh, that was immediately to our west, both in Brighton Way and Topton Way, but we saw there was a, there was a good mix of traditional and more modern or contemporary uh, architecture uh, due to the project's position adjacent to the business district. Uh, we believe that this building could transition well between those uh, two uses of residential and commercial. Our building uh, is proposed to have a flat roof. Um, that achieves a couple things. One, the floor story building, which would be more uh, stories than the buildings to the west, uh, but the lack of a pitched roof is going to mean that this building's overall height is uh, more contemporary with those buildings to the west. The uh, commercial buildings that are in this general area, both to the south uh, Bank of America, as well as to north uh, Straub's and east uh, to the uh, hotel across the street, mean that this property would be uh, the only multifamily residential uh, property that's uh, in this stretch. Um, and so we would be able to develop our own language uh, for this building uh, and, and not necessarily have to reflect the residential properties um, that are adjacent to it. The current iteration of the architecture uh, suggests uh, modern materials, but uh, they're focused on uh, materials that have uh, not only uh, you know, good value, they're, they're uh, uh, buildings that are uh, stone uh, and, and precast concrete um, that would provide us both durability and long lasting value uh, for the property. What you see is, uh, rendered as gray uh, is what we're referencing as limestone. There is both limestone in the buildings that we are uh, replacing as well as others in the neighborhood. And we felt like that was an appropriate uh, homage to those buildings that we're uh, replacing. The, the gray that is rendered uh, is something that we are able to adjust and, and may warm it up to a more buff colored uh, limestone as we go towards, uh, you know, final selection of materials. The inset balconies um, would allow us to break up the facade uh, as well and provide a little bit more activity on that ground floor, uh, as well as introducing secondary materials, again, for greater warmth or additional texture uh, for the facade. Um, let's see, pardon me. I, th I think from a height standpoint, I mean, I, I know that um, we felt like that this building, because it was only four stories, the uh, 
there's three and a half story buildings behind us. So there's not that much of a, a change from the height of our building to, to the residential units behind us. And it, it provides a nice transition between the office towers and some protection for the neighborhood behind us. Absolutely. We, uh, we have definitely um, looked at the city's requirements for sustainability and plan to incorporate those into this project. Uh, the, the elements of the facade will all take into account, um, you know, recycled materials or, um, you know, very high value, long lasting materials um, that would provide a, a very nice uh, long life cycle for this building. I think that's all the comments that I have for this. Okay. Um, David, did you have any other comment? No, we're looking forward to, I mean, obviously we, we understand that we need to um, go visit with the neighbors. We, we have every intention of doing that. We, we understand we're not doing this on an island. We want to be, we're in the neighborhood already across the street. We want to be good neighbors, but we'd like to see this, this area redeveloped too. It'll, it'll improve the, the, the curb appeal for our, our asset that's across the street. Um, and we think that, you know, we've talked to the Straub folks and they're asking us for, for more residential. That's really what, what they think is, is important for their business. And, and then while we would love to have added some retail here, um, we really feel like that this wasn't the right place for retail, but by adding, by adding residents, eventually the retail will come. And so that's kind of what we were trying to accomplish here. So appreciate your guys' comments. Okay. And David, as you said, you would approach the neighbors. Uh, as David Gibson, the city manager, indicated earlier in the meeting, uh, going through the process leading up to a PUD, you would have to have a community-wide meeting also, where you would be able to uh, hear from and respond to many of the citizens uh, and with their concerns. Uh, so that would be coming up once you uh, are ready to start the formal process. Um, I'll start out with a few comments. Uh, I think residential in this area um, could actually be very nice. And uh, I think that's um, a, uh, a very positive thing to look at. Uh, but I do have a couple concerns that I'd like to throw out and you may want to address them. Uh, the existing building has a very elegant curve to it uh, that reflects the curvature of, of Forsyth. Um, we don't see that here. Uh, this really looks like a flat building with two canted wings on the uh, northwest and southeast, for lack of better direction. Um, uh, also, because of that, it seems like several small buildings put together. So I'm not able to read the continuity or the unity of the entire building. Uh, I'm very concerned with the depth from the drawings that were shown tonight in plan view uh, and what was submitted. I can't tell how far uh, to the backside, I guess that's the southwest, um, the new building would be uh, approaching the property line. And uh, I've looked at Google Earth quite a bit, and the existing building apparently covers maybe 55 to 60 percent of the depth of the lot. The remainder appears to be, and uh, I've certainly been back there, uh, an open at grade parking lot, uh, which um, connects to the lower level uh, space that was occupied at one time. So I think we have to come to terms and see how deep this building is. And as you can see on what you've put up there at the lower right end, it comes perilously close to the property line. So, um, I think you would need to take a look at that. I'm very concerned with uh, what will be five stories in height on the back side of the building, getting that close to the residences behind them. 
So it's a combination of height, but mostly depth that I have a real concern with. Um, when we're looking at materials, uh, and it goes back to my comment of, it looks like several little buildings put together. Uh, it reminds me more of a, uh, a group of little office buildings together rather than residential, even though when I see the balconies, that to me does bring back residential character. Uh, it is definitely contemporary, uh, but even when we look at the contemporary buildings built on Topton and Brighton and Shaw Park Drive uh, around uh, the neighborhood, the majority of them are brick. And we seem to be a brick city. Uh, I'm throwing that out because brick can certainly unify um, an entire design. So um, I'm concerned about the context in the neighborhood from the materials and from the shape of the building and from it not looking like a unified single structure. But then let me come to the uh, final thing. Uh, I was really hoping that we would see some sort of an adaptive reuse of the existing building. Uh, from my knowledge or lack of it, the existing building is possibly the largest and one of the last mid-century buildings in our downtown area. Years ago, we lost the largest one, which was originally the Scruggs Vandiver Barney store. Uh, it's where the initial Centene Tower now stands. Um, about a year and a half ago, we saved the Harris Armstrong building uh, which is, has been called the Shanley Building at the southwest corner of Maryland and Bemiston Avenues. So we know that we have lost some. Uh, we know that we have saved some. Uh, I th uh, really think that we need to be, um, we as a plan commission, uh, the citizens, as well as the applicants, need to really consider some of the historical and cultural value of what might disappear in the future. So um, I think I've said enough. Let me uh, open it up to uh, some of the other uh, plan commission members. Uh, as usual, Carolyn, we'll start with you. Yeah, um, I had a lot of the same comments that you made, Steve. Um, one of the things about you know uh, it not looking uniform and it doesn't have the curve. Um, the thing that I want to go back to is I would like to see some kind of proof or research or details of why this could not be retrofitted or reused um, as at least for the um, for the uh, the storefronts and then you build up from behind at least that initial facade or. You do something where it's actually um, adaptive reuse of something that's historic as opposed to just wiping it out. Um, I also feel like the architecture for me, it seemed like it could be a project that's anywhere. Um, it doesn't say it's in Clayton. It says that I could put this in Illinois and it would be okay. Um, so to me, it, it, I know it's a little harsh, but it, it just feels like it's not part of Clayton. Um, I, I don't agree with that it shouldn't have retail at the base. I think that's a good opportunity to start tying things together. And um, you know, maybe you have two, maybe you have more uh, two bedroom uh, instead of three bedroom. Um, that sounds pretty huge. So, um, did somebody say something? Oh, <clears throat> those are my comments. Um, and we covered everything else. So uh, that's all I have for. I think the history of that building is important as well, and I will re reiterate that. Um, I was a big uh, vocal person on the Shanley building, uh, and I, I really don't feel that this building should go away. Thank Thanks, Carolyn. George? Um, yes, I'm sorry. I have to stay on off video for a moment here. Um, one, um, I, I'm 
going to say one, I moved to St. Louis Clayton back in 2001. And this building piqued my interest in 2001. To my knowledge, since 2001, I don't believe there's been a tenant in this building. Um, there's a common term that's used in historic preservation and that's demolition by neglect. And I'm afraid that's what the historic building of 8230 Forsyth has seen, demolition by neglect, and the neglect includes uh, vacant. I, I'm appreciative that Midas is coming forward today to try to bring something to reactivate these two lots that have just sat there desolate for a number of years, too many years. Um, is the plan what I want? Not yet. Um, Steve, I think you covered most of the parts there. I think the height's a little bit off. Um, Carolyn, your comment on saving the facade. I, I, I really don't know what to say other than I am saddened to see us come to this point in the city of Clayton where um, we're losing so much of our history and our architectural and um, I'm disappointed. Thank you. Thank you, George. Helen? Well, I think those before me have covered a number of my um, concerns. I guess another thing is the screen that we're looking at now says garage entry retail lobby level. But from what I have heard, there is no retail. Am I correct or is no, this? Helen. There's, there's no retail. It's a, the garage is on the corner there. Okay, so it should really be garage entry, first level residential lobby level. It's misleading, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think given we have Forsyth Point, which is moving well from what I can see, um, there are going to be more people at the corner of Brentwood and Forsyth. I think this is a natural area for some retail. And the residential, I don't know, at this point, the form, the whole thing is, it could go any place is part of my concern. It doesn't appear to be really site specific. Um, and then the materials being kind of amorphous, it just needs more definition work. Um, what will the front really look like in plan view? What will the back look like in plan view? Will the back be five stories rising out of grade or will the grade be raised a bit? You know, there's a lot of questions that I think need to be answered. So those are just my thoughts right now. Thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Helen. Ira? Unmute, unmute. Um, yeah, uh, history of architecture and history of development in the city of Clayton, especially when you're talking about near a neighborhood uh, where you're gonna have some vocal opposition, you better have some architecture that's gonna knock the socks off of an ARB and a board of aldermen. Um, and that you haven't done it. I just, you know, get your feedback on that. You haven't done it. Um, I, uh, I agree with a lot of the comments that we've had here today. Um, I, you know, I, I, you know, this whole thing about, um, you know, we, we, we can't do anything to save the building. Uh, I, I just don't think is, is, uh, is really a fair statement. Um, because, yeah, I know that, and as George said, this, this property has been uh, vacant for many years, and it was purposely left vacant so that it could be developed uh, in, in, in what we're seeing today. Um, and that it just that just bothers the hell out of me. I mean, I it's just it's unfathomable that 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 kind of a formula that would work 
uh, among a bunch of very smart people uh, sitting on our boards. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of issues here. Uh, you've got, you know, because of your footprint uh, being so different than the footprint of the existing buildings, um, that is only going to um, get the ire of a neighborhood behind there that, that you know, that, you know, when you're going to ask for all sorts of zoning changes, um, height, height changes, et cetera, et cetera. I, I just, I think you're going to have a real, real hard way to go to get all this uh, out of what you're showing us tonight. Understood. Thank you, Hiram. David? I don't have anything to add. A lot of good comments. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, David and Stephen, do you have any uh, other comments or possibly questions that we could address right now? No, I mean we weren't trying to make you mad. Uh, the, uh, I, I mean we, you know, the the building is deeper because we were trying to park it. Right, and so the parking was underneath, and so that's really what what drove that depth. Okay, was to be able to be get the parking on the site. Uh, we really did try to keep it at a height that we thought was was reasonable, um, and you know, in order to to make the economics work. I mean, we the, the office building. I, I we we would love to save it. It's 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 probably not something we can do from an economic standpoint. So. Um, We'll have to decide if what we want to do next with this. But I, I, I mean, we were we really thought that putting residential there was would really help us would, would be a good thing for the city. And uh, um, so we'll have to, to go back and evaluate and see see what we can do. But it uh, um, we we may not be able to accomplish what you, what you guys want. So there may not be a a way to it may it may just have to set set vacant for a while. So. Well, let us let us get back to you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, David. We um, uh, we'd like you to uh, continue on. Uh, as yes. I said before, I think that the uh, uh, residential use of that site makes sense. But I think when we look at all the details and the potential for adaptive reuse, possibly of a building that has a cultural and historical part of our city. Uh, we have to consider all of that together. So uh, hopefully you can uh, take a look at it and uh, come back with us and we'll certainly be uh, open to your return and we'll discuss it further with you. All right, thank you all, I appreciate the comments, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well that brings us to the end of the meeting and um, Let's go around and see if there are any uh, further comments. Uh, Carolyn? Uh, okay. Um, are, we're still recording. This is not just us ending the meeting. We are recording. Yes. Okay. No, I, I don't have any further comments. Okay. George? No, I, I have nothing further. Okay. Helen? No, just a happy new year. Thinking ahead. <laughs> good. Ira? Hey, yeah, happy new year. Um, good holiday to everybody. And uh, Steve, thanks for doing the wonderful job you do this year. Thank you very much. Well, it's, a, it's a team approach. David? Nothing further. Happy holidays. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie, are you still on? I am, and I don't have anything further this evening. Okay. Anissa, uh, I'm sure you're still with us. And uh, do you have any uh, thing to tell us about the first January meeting? Um, I think it will be another um, busy meeting. Uh, one thing that I would like to know, uh, Steve, I know that we had talked about you doing your presentation at the next meeting. Um, we will be bringing a discussion item before the plan commission about how height is measured on buildings, particularly in the Clayton Gardens UDD. Um, we've had a lot of development on Kingsbury lately and a lot of feedback from residents. So just would like to bring that to your attention. Um, so just be thinking about that before the next meeting, but we'll have a report ready for you. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, am I on for that meeting or will it be the 2nd of January? 
it'll be the second January the meeting. Second. <laughs> okay. so, sorry to push you twice. I know that you're really looking forward to presenting, but things keep oh, coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the top of my list. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for your participation tonight. I think we uh, got through several uh, uh, somewhat difficult issues. Uh, and everyone enjoy the holidays and have a happy new year. And we'll see you, I believe it's the 6th of January. So enjoy the holidays and we'll uh, be back together soon. Thanks very much. Thank you all. Take care. Well, happy holidays. <laughs>